And the record will reflect the jury is back appropriately seated in the jury box. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to proceed at this time with the next witness from the people. People call Jaquan Hamilton. Approach the podium, raise your right hand for the judge, please. Do you hereby solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you do under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Sir, if you would, for the record, state your full name and spell your last, please. Um, Jaquan Hamilton. Last name, H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. Our Yes. Sir, are you currently in the Army? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is your rank? Specialist. So I can call you Specialist Hamilton, is that okay? Yes. Okay. And just so you know, if I can make sure that... Um, the microphone, if you're going to speak, and make sure it's up a little closer to your mouth so you have it and it records it. Okay, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, currently, where are you stationed, sir? Uh, Fort Bragg. North Fort Carolina. Bragg? North Carolina. Okay. If I could just have you speak up a little bit so everybody can hear okay. How long have you been in the Army? For about three years and some change. Three, a little over three years? Yes. Okay. Do you have a, did you were stationed at other forts around the country? Yes, I was stationed at Fort Stewart, Georgia. Okay. Any deployments? No, just a rotation to Korea. A rotation to Korea? Yes. Okay. So as a specialist, um, what is your particular job in the Army, sir? Um, maybe my truck driver. Truck driver? Yes, sir. Okay. Just so you know, I want you to speak up. So is it, you're talking to me way back here so we can hear you. Okay, sir? Okay. Right. That was better. You know Jeremy Cuellar? Yes. How do you know Jeremy Cuellar? Uh, serve side by side and work with him every day. Okay. In the Army? Yes. Was he in the same division as you? Yes. How is it broken up in terms of unit, company, division, battalion, brigade? Um, it's like squad, platoon, company, then it's brigade. No, then it's battalion, then it's brigade. Okay. Squad? Platoon, company, battalion, brigade. Yes. Okay. Were you in the same squad yes. as uh, Jeremy Cuellar? Yes. Okay. Did you become friends with him? Yes. Did you work a lot with him? Did you see him a lot? Yes. Do you know Kamaya Hassel? Yes. Is she here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please point her out and describe an article of clothing that she's wearing? She's over there to the left, and she's in the suit. Your Honor, may the record reflect must identify the defendant here today? Yes, it may. How do you know the defendant? Work side by side with her as well. Same squad? Yes. Spent a lot of time with her? Yes. Got to know her well in the Army? Yes. Were you friends with her? Yes. Were you friends with Jeremy Cuellar? Yes. Is the defendant uh, Hassel, when did you first meet her? Um, a year ago, before I left to Korea. Okay, when did you leave to Korea? In February, so I met her in January. Of what year, sir? 2018. 18, so about a year and a half ago then? Yes. Uh, let me ask you this. Did you ever have uh, contact with the uh, defendant through, like, social media and things like that? Uh, I don't Instagram, but that's it. No Instagram like. account? Yes. Okay. Uh, what was her Instagram name? Do you recall? Un I don't know how to say it, though. You remember the letters? It's like U-N-D-S, something like that. U-N-D-S something? Yes. Okay. U-N-D-S dot K-E, does that sound familiar? Yes, that's it. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's an Instagram account you have? Yes. Would you communicate with her on that? No, not at all. Not at all? No. Do you know if she had Snapchat? Yes, I do. Okay. Did she have Snapchat? Yes. Okay. Did you observe her using Snapchat ever? Yes. So you went to Korea in February 2018? Yes. Did your whole squad go? The whole brigade went. The whole brigade went? Yes. So was the defendant included in that then? Yes. Was Jeremy Cuellar included in that? 
Yes. Now, when you got to Korea, uh, did they have different barracks set up for you to live in? Yes. Did your squad kind of stay maintained in a small barracks or a same com- barracks? Our company stayed in one barracks. Your company did? Yes. Did the defendant stay in the barracks with you? Yes. And did Jeremy ha- uh, Cuellar stay in a barracks with you? Yes, we're all in the same company. And when I say, when you say a barracks, what does that mean exactly? Like a room, like a, a living quarter that they give you okay. for your duration of the time. Kind of like a, is it like a small apartment or just kind of just a Yeah, it's like a small thing? apartment with no, no um, stove. No stove. Mm-hmm. Almost like a, is that yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> and did you work with them side by side in Korea also? Yes. What was the relationship between the defendant and Jeremy Cuellar? Um, as far as I know, it was platonic for, to a certain amount of time. What do you mean until a certain amount of time? Um, when I went to, when we had went to the club, it was an incident where, you know, Jeremy Cuellar stated that that was his female, that was his girl. That was his girl? Yes. Okay. Were they having a relationship beyond just a friendship? Yes. And that started in Korea? As far as I know. Do you know Sergeant Tyrone Hassel? Yes. Okay, how do you know him, sir? Um, play basketball against him and see him in passing and know him as, as her husband. Now, he wasn't in your squad, was he? No, he wasn't in my company. He was in a different battalion. Okay, was but he, he was in, in the same brigade, though. Same brigade, different battalion? Yes, the whole brigade went to Korea, but it was a different battalion. Okay. Was he an infantry battalion? I think it was a 5-7 calf. It was a calf. It's, Cavalry? It's, yeah, it's not called a battalion. It's, it's different, but they're still in the same brigade as us. Okay. He was in the cavalry uh, yes. division, did you say? No, brigade. Brigade, cavalry. I mean, brigade. battalion, but it's not called battalion. Okay. Now, when you were up there, was he in a different barracks with his cavalry division than you were with your squad or your company? Yes. So he was living separate then from the defendant? Yes. Sir, there come a time in Korea when Jeremy Cuellar approached you about his relationship with uh, the defendant, Kamaya Hassel. Yes, it was a time. Something that sticks out in your mind? Yes. Okay, can you tell the jury about that? So he came to my room, basically just stating that Buddy has to go, and basically just saying that he wants to do it around block leave time. Okay. Sir, I'm going to need you to speak up just a little bit. Okay. So you said he came to your room? Yes. Okay, where's your room at? Where are we talking here? Uh, second floor, in the barracks. In Korea? Yes. Okay, do you remember what time this was roughly, when this was? No, I don't remember Korea time like that, but I know it was during the day, it wasn't at night. Okay, what about season? Uh, it was hot, so it had to be summer. Summertime? All right, and it was during the day you indicated? Yes. So he came to your room. Was there anybody else in your room when he came there? No. Okay. Were you decent friends with him at this time? Yes. So when he came to your room, do you know where he was coming from? Mm, he said he was previously with Kamai. So he had just been with the defendant? Yes. So you made a statement. He came to your room and said, Buddy's got to go? Yes. Was that his words? Yes. Okay. Who's Buddy? Um, he's referring to... Mr. Hassel. Sergeant Hassel? Yes. Okay. And what do you mean, got to go? I guess he meant that he wanted to go. I'll object to the speculation of what he guesses, Mr. Sustain. Thank you. So he said, but he's got to go. Yes. Did you follow up with him on that? Yes, I said, what do you mean? And he explained it. He basically explained, but he has to go. Like, he has to get done. He has to get rid of him. He has to get rid of him? Yes. But he's got to go. He has to get rid of him. Did he say anything more about it? Um, no, just basically stating that he wanted to do it around block leave time. Did he appear, let me ask you this, did you ask him anything why he wanted to do it? Mm, no. Okay. Did you talk with him anything about money at all or something like that? Uh, I just asked him like, so what are you going to, like, what are your plans? You like. Basically, the money is like a bonus or whatever. What money, sir? Um, life insurance money. For Sergeant Hassel? Yes. <clears throat> Did 
you ever ask him about if Kamaya and the Sergeant Hassel could just get a divorce or anything like that? Yes, he says no. Did he say why not? He says not going to happen. Divorce isn't going to happen? Mm -hmm. Yes. So he indicated to you that he was planning that buddy's got to go, got to get rid of him on block leave? Yes. And he also mentioned about the life insurance being a bonus if buddy got to go? Yes. Did he say why he wanted to do it on block leave? Because mm, it's like an easy, it's easier, and it's not going to be as like noticeable. Like it's, it's an easy getaway. Okay. When you're in the room with Jeremy Quayer and he's talking about this plan for block leave and Sergeant Hassel, did you ask Jeremy Quayer if Kamaya Hassel, the defendant here, was involved in the plan? To murder Sergeant Hassel. Yes, I asked him. I said, "How do you know that's what she wants?" He said, "She that has to be done." Okay. You asked him, Jeremy Quayer, "How do you know that's what she wants?" Yes. And he responded to you, "To you, she wants it done." Yes. Ju hold on, Judge. I'm sorry. That's. I think his response was, "It has to be done." He didn't say she wants. Oh. I'll let him Thank answer you. the question, and then the jury can use their collective okay. memory as to what the last. I'm Thank you, Joe. I'm going to need you to speak up, okay? When you asked him whether or not Kamaya Hassel was involved in the planning of the murder of her husband, what did he say? He said, I said, how do you know that's what she wants to do? He said, it's mutual. Like, it has to be done. It's mutual? Yes. Okay. Did he ever... <clears throat> give a different phrase uh, beyond that in terms of whether or not she was in agreement with it. It was just, it was just a mutual. Right? It's that's mutual? What, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to need you to that's speak up. He's, yes, that's what he said. That's what we want to do. Okay. So his statement to you when I asked, that is what we want to do? Yes. Did you follow up with him on that? I asked him. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. Did he say whether or not, is that where he just came from discussing it with her? Yes. <clears throat> Sir, when did you first hear about the death of Sergeant Hassel? I heard about it in formation. When I came back to work. Did you ever see it before that on any type oh, yeah. of social yes, media? I seen, it, I seen it on Instagram. On Instagram? Yes. Who's Instagram? Kamari. That's the UNDS.KE Instagram? Yes, sir. And when did you hear about that? Um, I think it was the night of. <coughs> Where were you? At home playing with my daughter. With your daughter? Yes. How old your daughter? Five. Five? Yes. Eventually, did you make your way back to Fort Stewart from your block leave? Yes. When you got back to Fort Stewart, was there any general announcement made about what took place? Yes, we had a um, formation, but before we salute the flag at 6.30, it was told us at 6.15 while we were in formation that um, he, had, did, he had died or whatever. And that was told as a company? Or as yeah, a that was told as a um, company, and then Opportune Sar broke it down to us. She just was, she told it to us again as a um, squad. And you were friends with Jeremy Cuellar when this took place? Yes. You were friends with Kamaya Hassel when this took place? Yes. A little bit after uh, it was told as a company and then a platoon, did you meet with Jeremy Cuellar? Did he contact you? Yes. He come up to you? Yes. Okay, where was that at, sir? It was in a motor pool. Do you remember what time this was? Like 6.35, 6.40, right after we saluted the flag. And what did he say? He just came up to me and was like, it's done. Can you guys hear okay? If you can't hear, raise your hand and let me know, and we'll make sure that it's repeated. Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing you a little bit myself, so if I can just make sure you speak up, okay? Okay. 
So you met with him just after 6.30? Yes. When you got back to Fort Stewart? Yes. And this is in early, first week of January? Yes. And when he first approached you, what did he say? He said, it's done. I had to do what I had to do. It's done, I had to do what I had to do? Yes. Did he give you any, uh, talk any further about it? He was going into detail, basically the same way he caught him coming out the house and he shot him in the head and then he dropped and then he shot him again. He caught him coming out of the house, I shot him in the head. Yes. He dropped and I shot him again. Yes. Did he say why he shot him again? No. I'm sorry? No. Did he say again why, whether or not um, he did it on block leave, in terms of why it had to get done then? No, that was already previously discussed though. Oh, okay. How long did this conversation take? Like five, ten minutes, because we had to go back to um, going back to work. Did you have a little bit uh, further conversation with him later that morning? Later on, to around like say about 9.30ish. What did he say? He was telling me how he was taking out the place for a couple days and how his window was closing and he had to get it done. The window was closing? Like to getting off block leave. Okay. And he had to get it done? Yes. Where does he live? Four story. Okay. Do you know where his family lives, or where where is uh, Jeremy Cuellar from? Oh, Chicago. Do you know where he took his block leave? Chicago. Did you ask him about the weapon used? Um, I asked him, and it was either a Rugo or an Okay. Did you ask him where this weapon was? Oh, no. He said he got rid of it. He said he got rid of it? Yes. Where did he say he got rid of it at? Chicago. After, uh... Cuellar told you about the plan, I'm sorry, after he told you about what happened that morning? Mm -hmm. did, yes. Did you eventually uh, come forward and make contact? <laughs> yes. Did you see the chaplain first? Yes. Was that in order to, why'd you go see the chaplain first? Just to get some spiritual guidance. Okay. And then did you speak with um, investigator Roberts, Zachary Roberts? Yes. Did you tell him what you knew, what Quare had told you about the plan? Yes. And did you tell him about Kamaya Hassel's involvement in it? Yes. When you uh, spoke with the chaplain, then spoke with Roberts, why did you eventually do that? Like, what do you mean by that? Why did you come forward? Because I knew it was the right thing to do. Were they your friends at the time? Yes. Was it tough to come forward on your friends? Yes. Thank you. I have nothing further. I had to do what I had to do. That's what he said to you, correct? Specialist Quayer? What did you say, sir? He said, I had to do what I had to do. That's what you just testified that Specialist Cuellar said to you, correct? Yes. Now, you worked with Specialist Cuellar before Korea, is that correct? Yes. How long had you known him before Korea? For about five, six months. So at that, were you guys still in the same, sorry, squad at that time as well? No, we had came over from another brigade. They was asking for volunteers to go to Korea, and several of us raised our hand, and we got chosen. Would you say that you became certainly friends when you met him? Were you guys friendly up until Korea? Is that fair? Yes. Right. And when you went over to Korea, you guys were living in fairly close quarters, it sounds like. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So you were friends, and then I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys became obviously much better friends as you're living in Korea together, correct? Yes. Right. You get to Korea in February of 18, is that right? Yes. And when do you get back? I got back. October 13th. Is that when Cuellar gets back as well? No, he, got, he was on a different flight before me. How much sooner a, than a, you? A week, a week. 
The right. flights was like every three days, every three, four days. So he got back a week before me. So, but, so you guys were together basically in Korea the entire time? Yes. All right. And fair to say you guys got pretty close during that time. Is that correct? Yes. All right. You guys talked about all kinds of stuff, I imagine, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? Okay. Stuff, just guys talk about life, personal life, work, complaints, things like yes. that. Right. Now, you met Kamaya in, you said January, is that right? Yes. January of 18. Yes. Just before going to Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And during that time that you go to Korea, from the time, do you know when Kamaya leaves Korea? If you know. It was earlier than all of us in September. So in the time from February to September, so about eight months, you guys are all in Korea together. Is that correct? Yes. And you're working, you said you work side by side with Kamaya and Cuellar. Is that right? Yes. Every day you guys work together. Is that right? Yes. And you also said that you guys would, you know, go out and socialize together. Is that correct? Sometimes. Sure, not every night, not but every sometimes. Time, yeah. Yes. Right. There were nights where I imagine you guys would all go out to dinner, something like that, off base? No. No? But there were times you guys would go to bars or clubs, is that correct? Only once. Just the one time? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. And it was during that one time that you guys went out, was Sergeant Hassel, was he there when you went out that night? Yes. Right. So you're there. Kamai is there, Sergeant Hassel's there, Quayar is there, who else is there? Um, like, just the club. You got the club. Right. A bunch of other people from your squad are there? No, it was just, no, it was just us at the club. And there are obviously a bunch of people in the club, is that right? Yes. All right. And you said that during this time that you're there from February to September, the only thing that you viewed that led you to think that Kamaya and Quayar were in a relationship is you said that Quayar referred to her as his girl. Is that correct? Yes, and off the things that, I, that he told me, okay. off like sure. him sharing me that. With but the things that you saw, the only thing you testified, the only thing you saw was Quayar saying that Kamaya is his girl. Is that right? Yes. All right. On this one instance, is that right? Yes. And is it fair to say that the rest of the time when you guys had night, uh, would you guys have nights off from work while yes, you were we in Korea? Yes, yeah. And would you guys leave base or you just mostly stayed on base? When we could go, when we could leave off, because most times we couldn't, sometimes we could. So it was like whenever we could leave off base, we would. When Jeremy tells you this plan, at this point, you've been friends with him for over about a year, over a year. Is that right? Yes. All right. And he tells you this plan, and he sort of goes into some detail. Is that right? Yes. All right. He tells you this plan, and you, I don't imagine, you didn't go and report this to anybody, did you? No. All right. You didn't report it to your CO, your commanding officer, or anything like that? No. All right. Did you think that he was actually going to do this? No, not at all. All right. Is that why you didn't report it to anybody? Yes. All right. You've been friends with this guy for about a year, is that right? Yes. All right. And as you said, you've grown closer while you were in Korea, is that right? Yes. And so as he's telling this, you, as he's telling you this, you guys are good friends, you don't think there's real, this is really going to happen? No, not at all. all right. Had you thought it was going to happen, presumably you would have told someone, is that fair? Yes. And nothing in your history with him led you to suggest that he was capable of doing this. Is that fair? No. After this happened, let me step back. That's a poorly phrased question. When you get back to base, I'm talking in December, January of 19, that's when you hear that Sergeant Hassel's been killed, correct? I heard it first, well, I saw it on Instagram. Right. Do you remember approximately when that was? Let me ask that a better way. Was that before you came back to Georgia? Yes. Right. And when you get back to Georgia, you know, the information is confirmed by your sergeant. Is that right? Yes. Right. And at this point, um, when you read, when you saw it on Instagram, did that make you think back to what Jeremy had said? Yes. Right. 
But you didn't report it to anybody then, is that correct? No. It wasn't until he came and spoke to you afterwards about what had happened. That's when you reported it to someone. Is that right? Repeat that. Sure. After you said that you have, you, and forgive me for muddling the termin terminology, you guys salute the flag at 630, correct? Yes. Is that AM or PM on this particular That's day? AM. It's AM. Right. AM every day. Thank you. And Cuellar comes up to you before you salute the flag at 615 and he talks to you, correct? No. No. He talks to you after. Yes. Thank you. That's about 645, is that right? Yes. All right. And he tells you what it is that he's done, is that correct? Yes. He then comes back and talks to you later that night, is that right? No. No? I'm sorry, later that morning? Yes. All right. And After I, we salute the flag, we went to get breakfast, and we came back to finish, the, we'll finish working because we did PT. So we did PT, and then he told me, and then we saluted the flag. I mean, we saluted the flag, he told me. We went through a good breakfast, and then we talked again. And so between him telling you at 645, the second time you guys talk, that's after breakfast, you said correct? Yes. Is there anything else in between the next time you guys speak? What do you mean? By I mean, other than breakfast, do you have, is there duty you guys have to go do, or is it no, right no, after no. breakfast, he tells you? It's like breakfast, and then we coming back to work, and I was smoking a black and mild in my car, and he pulled up next to me, and then he was telling me how he staked the place out and everything. And... He tells you all that, and at that point, do you immediately go to the chaplain, or do you take some time on it? I take some time on it. Right. Approximately how much time do you take on it before you go Four see days. the chaplain? Four days. Okay. And no, no, no. I seen the chaplain the next day, but until I came forward to Agent Zachary Roberts, that was like four days. Sorry. So you go see the chaplain. I'm sorry, that day? The no, day, the next day. The next day, all right. Yes. And then it's four days later that you speak with yes. special... Yes, we, we came back on a Monday. I seen the chaplain around Tuesday, Wednesday, and then that Friday I said something. And so from the time that you're confirmed that Jeremy's done this until the time that you come forward to law enforcement, yes. it's... About four or five days, you said? Yes. Did it surprise you to know that Jeremy had actually done this? Yes. And I would imagine part of the reason you went, you said you wanted to go to see the chaplain to get some spiritual guidance, correct? Yes. All right. Um, did part of that have to do with the guilt of maybe feeling like you could have done something to prevent this? A little guilt, yes. Certainly, potentially, if, if you had reported this, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Is that fair? Yes. And, sir, as a result of your knowing about this beforehand and your knowing about it afterwards, you haven't been charged with any crimes. Is that correct? No. Nothing else. Thank you. Um, you saw the chaplain the next day for guidance. Yes. Was it a tough decision to come forward? Yes. These are your friends? Yes. You pray on it or just reflect on it? or What do you mean by that? When you say spiritual guidance, those four days between you saw the chaplain initially until you went back with the chaplain and talked to Roberts, were you just thinking about it a lot? Yes. Why did you come forward? To do the right thing. Defense counsel asked, um, you knew about this beforehand? Yes. Okay. You obviously knew about it afterwards? Yes. And you did come forward, correct? Yes. Were you in any way involved in the planning of this at all? Not at all. Was the defendant involved in the planning of this? Yes. Thank you. If, if I may briefly, Judge? Yes. Specialist Cuellar told you that Kamaya was involved, correct? Yes. 
She never had any discussions with you, is that right? No. The only thing you know about this is from what Quayer told you, correct? Yes. Nothing else, thank you. I have nothing further. All right, thank you. You may step down. May the witness be excused. Yes, Judge. No objection. And you may call your next witness. People call Deontay Bacon. You can approach the podium, raise your right hand for the judge, please. Standing, please, sir. We hereby solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in a matter now pending before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that you do under the pains and penalties of perjury. All right, Thank you. Thank you. Sir, if you would state your full name for the record and explain. You're not going to have me for the record say yes or no. Yes. Nice and loud. Okay. Uh, full name, Deontay Bacon. Um, I'm going to ask this question. I assume I know the answer the, based on how you responded to the judge oath when you said Roger. Are you in the, are you in the military, sir? Yes. I will honestly tell you, in the years I've been doing this, I'm sure Mr. Kessel will agree. That's, I've never heard that before. I'm not, <laughs> and, the, and the judge has not been doing it much longer than me. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I don't think she's ever heard that. That was the first. What branch of the military are you in, sir? Army. Okay, how long have you been in the Army? Going on two years. And, sir, just so you're aware, I want to make sure that everybody can hear you. Uh, so if you can speak up in an outdoor voice, if you're giving directions, directing traffic, whatever you got to do, uh, to make sure everybody in the jury box hears you. Okay, sir? Yes. So you've been in the Army for about two years? Yes. What's your rank, sir? A specialist. A specialist, okay. And where are you stationed? A Fort Stewart. As a specialist in Fort Stewart, what's your job, sir? Eddie Mike. Okay. What I'm going to need you to do also is slow down. Um, I have no idea what you just said. Eddie Mike. Eddie Mike. Bro. Yes. Okay. That sounds like something Peyton Manning would say at the line of scrimmage. What does Eddie Mike mean? Truck driver. Truck. Okay. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Sir, I, I really am not trying to be disrespectful. I just need you to slow down, and you're going to have to explain to me because I don't understand all the terms in the military, like what everything means. Okay, sir? Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Um, so you're a truck driver for your squad? Yes. All right. And you're stationed right now in? Fort Stewart. Fort Stewart. How long have you been in Fort Stewart? A year and some change. Okay. Prior to that, where were you? Korea. Okay. And prior to that, where were you, sir? Fort Linwood. Where is that? Missouri. Missouri? Okay. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Cuellar? Yes. How do you know Jeremy Cuellar? Uh, we all met in Korea. I met him in Korea. Okay. And when did you go to Korea, sir? February 16th. Of what February year? February 16th, 2018. 2018. Were you in the same unit, same squad? Oh, we all met in the same unit and squad. Same squad and unit? Yes. Was he also a truck driver? Yes. M? 88 Mike. Mike 88. No, 88 Mike. Oh, 88 Mike. Okay. Right. Did you spend a lot of time with him, Korea? Yes. Okay. How much time? The whole nine months. Nine months. Did you see him a lot? Yes. Okay. Were you working with him every day? Yes. How long were your days, sir? How long they made us stay? Okay. Sounds like the government. Um, <laughs> so it could be very long days. Yes. And where did you live while in Korea? Uh, Camp Hovi. Okay. And did Cuellar live with you? He was under me. Under me? Like okay. In the barracks. So he was, was he in the same barracks as you? Yes. Okay. Did you get to become friends? Yes. With Jeremy Cuellar? Yes. Did you get become pretty good friends with him? Yes. Do you know Kamaya Hassel? Yes. Is she here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please point her out, describe an article of clothing that she's wearing? Uh, I think that's a blazer. Okay. Can you just point to her just for the record? Do you want to let the record reflect the witness identified the defendant here today? Yes, it may. How do you know the defendant? Oh, uh, we all met in Korea. She was also in there with you? Yes. Did she live in the same barracks as you? Yes. Do you know if she was married or not? Yes. Did you become friends with 
uh, the defendant, Ms. Hassel? Yes. Okay. You spent a lot of time with her? Yes. Hang out with her? Yes. Good friends with her? Yes. Was she married? Yes. Who was she married to? Tyrone Hassel. Okay. Is he Sergeant Tyrone Hassel? R yes. Okay. Now, was he living in that barracks? No. Okay. He was in a different battalion, correct? Yes. So you went to Korea in February 2018. When did you get back from Korea? Uh, October 2018. When does the defendant have a child? What do you mean by defendant? Was defendant? Uh, Miss Hassel. Yes. Does she have a child? Yes. Okay. Was the child in Korea with them? No. While you were in Korea, did the defendant and Jeremy Cuellar, uh were they friends? Yes. At some point, did it become more than friends? Yes. Can you tell the jury a little bit about that? Uh, they had an affair going on in Korea. Okay. And what do you mean by an affair, sir? Uh, two married people mess around. Did you see this? Ye I mean, yes. Okay, so wait, well, were you asking me? It's a, I, I, when I did you see it? Uh, the more we spent more time together, that's when I started to realize they had a relationship going on. Okay. Did you ever see them together? Um, in the same room in the barracks? Yes. Did you ever see them in the same bed together? Yes. Did you see that more than once? Yes. How often do you know? No. A lot? Yes. Well, okay. every time I was around. Every time you were like, around them? Off duty hours. Okay, off duty hours. What's off duty hours then? Whatever time you get off work. And you don't know when that is, obviously? No. But uh, in off duty hours, when you're spending time in the barracks, were they together a lot? Yeah, all three of us would be together. Okay. And when all three of you together, did they spend, did they appear to be affectionate with one another? Behind closed doors, yes. Okay. Why behind closed doors? They don't want anybody to know what they had going on. Okay. Did they tell you to keep it quiet? Yes. Why do you have to be careful about it? Why well, do they say keep it quiet? Uh, they don't want anybody to, to know. To the speculation as to why they well, said what they said. Let me ask, I'll rephrase. Do you know why defendant Kamai Hassel wanted to keep it quiet, if you know from what she told you? She was married, and they didn't want anybody to know they was messing around with each other. Okay. Is that the reason she gave? I would assume. That would I don't okay. To that as well, Judge Sustained. Okay. I, 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 I would jury to disregard the last answer. You were informed, though, to keep it under wraps. Yes. Okay. Do you know uh, Jaquan Hamilton? Yes. Okay. Uh, was he friends with Koyar and Hassel also? Yes, we all met around time in Korea. Did you ever uh, communicate with um, the defendant via Snapchat? Yes. Did she have a Snapchat account? Yes. Were you friends with her? Or had I had friends with her. Yes. In your contacts, things like that. Yes. Is she in your contacts anymore for Snapchat? No. Did you do anything to delete her from her contacts? No. You know how she got deleted from your contacts? No. She deleted herself, I guess. I'll object to speculation, Judge. Sustain. Thank you. Let me ask you this: Have you had other people um, Snapchat, like send messages and texts? Yes. And you can send videos. Yes. Do those delete automatically? Sometimes, if you didn't save it, yes, it oh, would. So if you don't save it, they delete? Yes. Okay. Have you had other uh, friends in your Snapchat account delete you? Yes. Or, I'm sorry, delete their accounts? Yes. When that has happened, have they disappeared from your contact list? Yes. Okay. Did you have the defendant in your contact list? Yes. At some point, did she disappear from your contact list? Yes. Did you do anything to make that happen? No. Did you also have an Instagram account? Yes. Did the defendant have an Instagram account? Yes. My name is Marcus People's Exhibit 137. Are you able to recognize that, sir? Yes. What is that? Is that a photograph? Uh, yes. Okay, what's it a photograph of, sir? Her Instagram. Okay. That's her Instagram account? Yes. Okay. And where did you get that photograph from? Where was that taken from? You just gave it to me. Good point. <laughs> I appreciate that, sir. <laughs>
Um, that's a photograph of a phone? Yes. Whose phone is it? I don't know. Okay. Do you remember meeting with me yesterday? Yes. Do you remember showing me your phone? Yes. I didn't have this on my phone. Is that what you, you did you pull up an Instagram account on your phone? No. For Kamaya Hassel? No. You have your phone with you today? Uh, it's not on me, but I don't have it. He, he has it. I might just need a brief recess to get his phone. Okay. Let me ask you this before we do that. Yes. Thanks. Are you familiar with that page? Yes. Okay. Whose page is it on Instagram? Kamaya's. The defendant? Yes. Okay. Is that fair and accurate of what her home page looks like? Yes. Okay. What's the address for her home page? Her screen name. Does she have a screen name oh, associated with uh, that account? Uns.ke. Unds. Ke. Yes. Okay. So that picture is a fair and accurate picture of her screen name. Yes. Her her account. Uh, the front page of her account. Yes. Now I move to admit people's one thirty seven in the evidence. Your Honor, other than making the record clear that Mr. Frank handed me that exhibit about thirty minutes ago, I, I don't have any basis for objection. All right, one thirty seven is admitted. Just so the record's clear, I only received that very recently, Your Honor, and it over to the bus. All right, Not thank you. With no objection? I have no objection. Okay, it's been admitted. Thank you. Due to the recency of it, Your Honor, it's not in a PowerPoint at all. I would just uh, show it quickly to the jury. All right. Yeah, nothing further. Special statement. Just okay. Just Any questions? One, just one moment. Specialist Bacon, at any time during the uh, time in Korea, at no point did you ever learn of, hear about, catch whiff of any sort of plot regarding the murder of Sergeant Hassel. Is that fair? I don't, I don't do it. What are you saying? Sure. When Sergeant, you, you found out Sergeant Hassel died, is that correct? Yes. All right. Were you aware of any plot to have him murdered? No. I'm nothing else, Judge. Thank you. I know. All right, thank you. You may step down. May the witness be excused. No objection. Yes, sir. All right, you're excused. Your Honor, I was talking with the defense counsel. I have another witness available. Uh, she's not terribly long, but it may go slightly into the lunch hour. I'm not sure if you want to break now for lunch or get her done and have I'll leave it to the jury if they want to go to lunch now or maybe go to lunch at 12.15ish. Why don't we go forward if it's not going to be longer than that? I, I think... Based on Mr. Perangeli, I think 12.15 would be a good approximation, Judge. Okay. When we wrap up. We would okay. call. All right. Thank you. Next witness. Hereby solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that you do under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Okay. I proceed, Your Honor. Yes. Ma'am, if you would state your full name for the record, spell your last, please. It's Brittany Michelle Fleming. Last name is F L E M I N G. Now, ma'am, proceed, Your Honor. Yes. Ma'am, what do you do? I'm a detective with Liberty County Sheriff's Office. You said detective with Liberty County Sheriff's Office? Mm, that's correct. Okay, and where's Liberty County, ma'am? It's in Hinesville, Georgia. Highfield? Hinesville. Oh, Hinesville, okay. And how long have you worked there? I've worked there for six years. And you do as a detective, do you help to follow up and assist with investigations? I do. And can that include investigations from uh, outside agencies to follow up on? And that is correct. Okay. Ma'am, is part of Fort Stewart, the Army base, in your county? It is. So have you had joint investigations with them previously? Yes. 
and you assist on uh, further investigation that might happen off the Army base, dealing with things that took place on the Army base. Does that make sense? That's correct. We okay. do. Is part of that maybe uh, executing search warrants? Yes, sir. Do people that uh, are in the Army at Fort Stewart, do some of them live off base in your county? Yes, sir. Is that usually when you're brought in to help out and assist? Correct. Ma'am, were you asked to assist uh, with an Army investigation involving a Jeremy Cuellar? Yes, sir. It had to do with the homicide of Sergeant Tyrone Hassel? Yes, sir. Okay. And part of your investigation, did you assist with executing a search warrant on Mr. Cuellar's vehicle? Correct. Okay. And was that done on January 14, 2019? Yes, sir. What type of car was it, ma'am? It was a black 2018 Chevy Impala. Ma'am, I'm going to hand you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 28 through 43. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to go through the, each of these one by one. But, Your Honor, in speaking with defense counsel, he was provided with all this and has, been, has reviewed it. I don't believe there's any objection to the uh, admission of those exhibits, 28 to 43, uh, and we'll put more fully on the record each one with Ms. Fleming as we go through? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, so numbers 28 through 43 are admitted. Thank you. Detective Fleming, um, take a look at People's Exhibit 29, actually. That's the car that you uh, executed a search warrant on on January 14, 2019? Yes, sir. And that car belongs to? Mr. Jim? Coyar? Yes, sir. People's 29, or I'm sorry, People's 30. Just another view of that car, ma'am? Yes. Can I just call you sir? You said ma'am? No, before that. Yes, you did. I apologize. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Detective Fleming, um, looking at People's Exhibit 28, is that simply a picture of the license plate on that car? Yes. Right. Ma'am, I want to take you um, going through the car, what you found, what you were able to see. So where did you begin your search of the car, ma'am? I began my search, well, first I took overall photos of the vehicle okay. and then proceeded to take inside photos of the vehicle. Um, I normally start from the front driver's side and work my way around the vehicle. Okay. Well, let's start at the front driver's side, okay? So taking a look at People's Exhibit 41, I just look at those. I'm These sorry. are kind of out of order. So. You know what? If you don't, if you could just see it on the screen, <laughs> yes. detective, you don't even have to worry about okay. that for right now. Okay. Does that sound fair enough? Yes. Okay. Exhibit 41, is that a picture of inside the front of the car? That's correct. Okay. And tell the jury what you found when you searched the inside front of the car. Um, the inside, there were receipts, I believe, in the center console from the first portion of it. There's multiple locations that I did find items in. Sorry, I'm looking for an escape bill if all of a sudden you had the scissors with them. Oh. Mm -hmm. right so purple scissors? Okay. There he is. Okay. So you're indicating you found some receipts. In what area were those, ma'am? I want to say it was in the center console. In the center console? Okay. My hand has been marked as People's Exhibit 126. I can have you open this up, ma'am. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. People's 126, that outside packaging is not your original packaging, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, that's from St. Joseph Township packaging? Yes. Inside the St. Joseph Township packaging, was there another evidence bag? It is. And whose evidence bag is that? That is my evidence bag. Thank you, Detective. Um, 
Can you pull out anything that might be in that evidence bag, ma'am? Yes. Those are the receipts you took from the Center Council? Yes. You know, I move to admit package 126 in the evidence. Without objection. 126 is admitted. Thank you. Actually, ma'am, I'm going to put these just back in here real quick. Okay. One of the items that you found was a receipt for Walmart, ma'am. Is that correct? That is correct. That's picture 43. That's correct, ma'am? Yes. All right. And that receipt for Walmart, what store? Uh, do you know the location of the store where that Walmart receipt came from? It was in Illinois. Um, Say Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Thank you. Did you find anything else uh, involving the driver's seat, ma'am? Yes, there was a 9 millimeter Luger bullet. And then you, what's the mark? This people's exhibit 125, ma'am. Again, are you uh, familiar with that packaging there? On the outside? On the outside, it's not for me. This is from. St. Joe's Police Department. If I can have you open that up, ma'am. Yes. Is one of my envelopes as well. So, Detective, inside the uh, St. Joe packaging was one of your envelopes? Correct. Okay. And when you reach into there, ma'am, what's located in there? Is the envelope with the bullet that I've located in the front, front seat. In the front seat? Yes. Okay, put that okay. back in there. We move to admit Exhibit 125 in evidence. Okay. 125 is admitted. Okay. Detective, as you were progressing, where did you go after you searched the front seat? I went to the driver's side uh, rear. And did you find anything of importance in the driver's side rear seat? In the driver's side rear seat, yes. I found three nine millimeter bullets within the back pocket of the driver's side. I'm gonna have you take a look at people's exhibit 37. Is that the pocket you're referring to, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And People's Exhibit 38, there appears to be, what's in that pocket that um, sticking out? Those were divorce papers from Mr. Coyer and his wife. Okay. In People's, okay. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 38. Is that a copy of the front page of the divorce papers? Yes. Okay. For Mr. Coyer and his wife? Correct. Those were in that pocket? Yes. I can have you open up, start opening up people's uh, Exhibit 124, ma'am. So you reached into that pocket. You indicated you found, what did you find? It was three 9-millimeter bullets. And looking at people's Exhibit 39 while you're opening that up. All right. You have three bullets sitting in your hand? Yes. That's your hand there, ma'am? No, it's not. Or someone else's hand? Correct. No. So looking at people's exhibit 124, is that inside bag consistent with your evidence collection? It is. And what's in exhibit 124, ma'am? It's a three nine millimeter. The same two there in the hand there. Correct. Okay. And those are. Uh, can you pull one out? Yes. And those are FC 9mm Luger yes. ammunition? Yes. Where did your search uh, progress from there, ma'am? 
I then went to the passenger side rear side of the vehicle. Okay. Did you find anything there? I did. What did you find, ma'am? I found a nine millimeter magazine, which also contains seven bullets within it. You're, I'm not sure if I did. I would move to admit People's Exhibit 124. Thank you. No objection. 124 is admitted. Ma'am, I'm going to hand you People's Exhibit 123. If I could just have you start opening that. Again, ma'am, is the outside of 123 packaging from the St. Joe Township Police Department? It is. And the inside, is that consistent with your packaging, ma'am? Yes. And what is in People's Exhibit 123, ma'am? It's the magazine containing seven and nine millimeter bullets inside. Why don't you take a look at People's Exhibit 32? Is that the magazine, ma'am? Yes. And is that where you found it? Correct. Exhibit 33. Is that after you took the magazine out of the car? Yes, sir. And 34. Are those the uh, the ammunition from the magazine taken out of the magazine? Yes. And based on the packaging there, that is the magazine and the seven rounds, unspent rounds that you recovered on your search of his car underneath his the driver or the passenger side seat. That is correct. May I move to admit people's 123 in evidence? No, okay. 123 is in evidence. And for the record, could you take one of those um, unspent cartridges? What kind of uh, ammunition is that, ma'am? This is a Luger 9mm FC. FC. Same as the one found in the back seat uh, in the pocket? Yes. Is that the extent of the ammunition found in the car, ma'am? Yes, that I can call. And then looking at People's Exhibit 36, <coughs> the picture of the back seat of the car, it appears to be a, some kind of green cloth. Yes. Okay. And what else was in the back seat, ma'am? There was a black hoodie. A black hoodie? Yes. Okay. After you searched the car, did you proceed to uh, Mr. Coyar's house the next day? Correct. Okay. Did you execute a search warrant at his house? I did. Fleming, People's Exhibit 44 through 54. It's my understanding the fence has no objection to the admission of 44 through 54. That's correct, Judge. 44 through 54 are admitted. Thank you. Where was this house located at? 710 Robin Hood Drive, Hinesville, Georgia, 31313. Liberty County, Georgia. And people's exhibit 44, that's a picture of his house? Yes. All right. When you were searching his house, showing you people's exhibit 45, did you find a sprint bag? I did. Okay. Did you look into that bag? I did. Did you find a receipt in there, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And this picture, that's a picture of the receipt, ma'am? Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to give you people's exhibit 46. Can you tell me the... Uh, Date and time on that receipt and the location where that was from? The date and time of this receipt is on January 1, 2019 at 135, located in 
Elm, Elmwood Park, Illinois. Okay. I'm going to show you People's 47. What did that receipt pertain to? This was for the activation fee for a sprint phone. Okay. Looking at People's 47, it looks just kind of like a strange picture. Do you recall this, though? I do. What is that, ma'am? That's an iPhone box. An iPhone box? Yes. And people's 48. Is that the back of the box, ma'am? It is. Does that give identifying information as to the phone on that photograph? Yes. Does that match up to the identifying information on the receipt in the people's exhibit? Yes. Then also there was some additional sprint paperwork, People's Exhibit 49, ma'am. Take a look. I know it's not easy to, almost impossible to read. Uh, if you can indicate to the jury, is that just was that with all the other paperwork and that phone and receipt? Yes, it was. Okay. Ma'am, did you find some mail in the house? I did. And show you people's exhibit 50. The mail, I'm not asking specifically what it is, but that mail does it indicate the recipient on that mail is Jeremy Coyar? It does. At that location? It does. For his residence? Correct. Thank you, Detective. Did you find any uh, paperwork relating to a firearm, ma'am? I did. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as people's exhibit 128. You able to recognize that, ma'am? I do. What is it? It's a five-day temporary registration for a privately owned farm. Okay. And where did you seize that from? From 710 Robin Hood Drive, my residence. Mr. Quare's residence? Yes. What part of the residence did you seize that from? This was located in his bedroom. I should go back. The Sprint items, the bag of the Sprint phone and the receipt from January 1st, where did you seize that item from, ma'am? From Mr. Quare's bedroom. From his bedroom? Yes. You want to move to admit Exhibit 128 into evidence? No objection. Number 128 is admitted. Are there two pistols listed on Exhibit 128? Yes. Okay. Is one a Ruger SR9E 9 mm Yes. Looking at People's Exhibit 51, that's a photograph of your of the uh, document that you have, ma'am. Correct. And the other listed on there is a Glock. 23? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, in your search of the residence, did you search for firearms? I did. Okay. I'll show you people's 52 that's been admitted. What is that, ma'am? That's the Glock 23. That I located in Mr. Corey's bedroom. Mr. Cuellar's bedroom? Correct. Okay. 53. What's that? That's the serial number for the Glock that I recovered from Mr. Corey's bedroom. And does that link up with People's Exhibit 128? It does. The same uh, serial, serial number on the Glock? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to take a look at People's 54. What's that a picture of, ma'am? That is the grocery bag um, that I recovered from Mr. Coyle's bedroom that contained 9mm or, well, yeah, some magazines inside of it. I can't recall if it's 9 or 40. Okay. May I approach? Yes. I'm going to hang this been marked as People's Exhibit number 127. Okay. I can this one. Thank you very much. Why are you opening up that, ma'am? The uh, Glock 23 we talked about? Yes. Do you, you recall what caliber gun that is? It was a 40. 40 caliber? Yes. Thank you. Now, inside of the uh, larger bag that the people handed you, 
Um, People's 127. Was there another bag, ma'am? It is. Are you uh, familiar with that bag? I am. This is one of my evidence bags. That's one of your evidence bags, Tech? Right. Okay, can you pull that out? Show the jury what's in there? It's two Ruger 9mm magazines. Can you see those in? And these were found in Mr. Cuellar's bedroom? Correct. Did you ever find a gun uh, that corresponded to those magazines in his house? I did not. Did you search for one? I did. You can you can put those back in that bag. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Now all the evidence that you collected that was in your own evidence bags and then sent to the St. Joseph Township Police Department. Exhibit 54, uh, the bag, those plastic containers and that black object in there, that's the picture of the magazine that you just pulled out? Correct. Yeah, I moved to admit people's 127 in the evidence. Okay. 127 is admitted. Next that moment, Your Honor. I have nothing further this witness. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Kessel, any questions? Detective, when you arrived at the home, you met with a Mr. Rashad Montgomery, is that correct? Yes, sir. Right. That was Mr. Cuellar's roommate, is that correct? Correct. Was it a two-bedroom home, if you recall? I want to say it was a three-bedroom home. Were there other people who lived at the home, if you know? Um, to my knowledge, there were, um, but they weren't there during the time of the execution of the search warrant. Obviously, so, Mr. Quayer are not there at the time of the correct. execution, correct? Correct. And obviously, you had a, a full opportunity to go through all of Mr. Quayer's belongings in his bedroom and in his car. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And certainly, all of the things pertinent to your investigation are things that were logged, cataloged, tagged, put into evidence bags, brought up here. Is that right? Correct. Nothing else, Judge. Thank you. I just, I just want to make sure everything you found, though, that wasn't introduced was found in Mr. Cuero's room? Correct. And nothing further. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. May the witness be excused? I have no objection. Thank you, Judge. Yes. <coughs> And ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to take a lunch break. I'm going to let you go out and have lunch on your own. And that's it. Return at 1.30 today, okay? At 1.30? All right. Again, I remind you, you can <clears throat> talk about anything except this case. Nobody can talk to you about the case when you're out there. If there shouldn't be anything, 